Hi, it's Martin, and welcome to another video on my Knit365 YouTube channel. Today is a podette, and it's one that is long overdue, and lots of you have requested to see. It's time to show off the baubles. I've finally got some time to do some filming. I'm outside the front door, so I'm gonna open the door, and then we're gonna walk in and take a look through the baubles. So, I hope that you enjoy. We'll have a bit of a look through them, and then I'll be back and uh, share my thoughts on the pattern. And there we have it, a couple of close-ups of the baubles. And I'm so, so pleased. I think they look lovely in the hallway. It is a bit dark down there. There's not that much natural light, but actually, as you've seen, when the front door is open, um, enough light comes in from the hallway. And actually, it's really nice because we've put a couple of them on the tree. And they do match the colours. You've seen, I've talked before, you know, it's it's sort of yellows and greys and it matches with the teal, as you can see on the tree behind me. But actually being able to put all of the baubles together on the wooden twigs, the alternative tree, it's actually a really lovely sort of focal point when you come into the flat. Mark's got the lovely lanterns and the big candles um, in the hallway. Apparently they're show candles though. I did suggest one. I was like, but we can light them like at Christmas when people come in. No, they're for show. What do I know? I'm not the interior designer. Um, so I think it's really lovely to kind of have that almost like a statement piece 
as you come in through the hallway. And they've already been a talking point, like my parents have been over, my mum's like, oh, the baubles look great. Got more people coming over over Christmas. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased with them. Um, I just thought I'd then chat for a little minute about, or a couple of minutes, about the pattern, my thoughts. Um, so if you've followed since January, this was my 12 month project. And Mark has nagged and nagged for years and years for me to make baubles for the house. And I'm always like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a great idea. But whenever we decorate the tree at the beginning of December, I'm like, it's a bit late to start them now. I'm never going to get all the baubles done by this point. So I decided in January I was going to do it. And I was going to plan to do two a month. And for the main, I did manage to keep up. There were some months that I was too behind. So I did four that month. I think when I got towards September though, I fell quite behind. And at one point then I had eight baubles to do. And it's fine. And again, if you've been here a while, you know I'm all about stress-free knitting. I don't want any drama. Knitting is our hobby, the same with crochet and all the other fiber arts that I know lots of people do. It's a way for us to de-stress and to switch off. So I set myself a goal of two a month. I didn't hit it all the time. Hey ho, that's that's life gets in the way. But I really enjoyed doing them. Um, and I did say I wasn't going to do another 12 month project. More on that in a moment. But they've been great fun to work on. So I made them in Rowan um, Alpaca and they're super soft. And the wool I bought um, from Lucy at Perla Row. And it's the wool that was recommended in the pattern. So the pattern is the Arn and Carlos bauble along they did it for rowan yarns two years ago i think and the idea was that you did one a day in december and i said i was never going to be able to do that and keep up with it so i did my two a month and the way i selected the colors as i've just said is kind of to match the flat so rather than your traditional red green cream we went for kind of this this yellow um the gray um the teal and the cream so that they were colours that matched our decor in the flat. And the wool was lovely to work with and I really enjoyed doing that. Um, the construction, you start, they're, they're knitting the round, so bottom up. We've talked in many videos before. I am team double pointed needle all the way. You people that do magic loop, I take my hat off to you. I cannot do it, it's too fiddly. I end up getting annoyed and again goes back to the whole point of crafting is meant to be fun. So you keep on with your magic loop. I'm going to keep on with my double points and I really do enjoy using them. But you started off with double points um, or a small circumference needle or magic loop. Um, then you knit the pattern, you decrease out for the top and then you just gather the stitches in the same way as you would the crown of a hat. Decrease the stitches together and then cast off. Um, sorry, and then um, thread them through the top. Um, stuff them, sew the bottom, and then you've created the ball, as you've seen in some of the previous Vlogmas videos, me doing that. And then there's a crochet chain um, that just gets fed through. Someone left a comment, and I did reply to say that, that was, I, I followed the pattern basically, but a lady made a really valid point about why didn't you do the chains at the same time? And I'm sure there's a method in Arn and Carlos's madness and how they created the pattern. But I guess if you leave a long enough loop uh, or long enough thread of yarn when you've gathered the stitches at the top, you could then create your chain and almost have it in one rather than creating the chains and then having two long bits of yarn that you sew through. Because um, you can see in the very bottom of this one, you can see a tiny flash of cream that's where I sewed the tail through um, and I did contemplate sewing it through the side to start with but I was worried about securing it and it's fine no one's gonna come in if my brother walks in and goes you've got something cream on the bottom of that hats off to him for his observation skills I I love them and I think if I was gonna do them again which I probably won't but if anyone is watching and and is looking to to sort of save some time on that I think that would be a great tip to try and incorporate the chain at the same time that you do the cast off um, and gather the stitches. Um, the one thing I was going to talk about is I also, from a colours perspective then, I kind of had these four colours and there was no real rhyme or reason to how I chose the colour for the ball. I was very compliant and I did each pattern 
is numbered 1 to 24. And I just started at the top and worked my way down. I did think about maybe randomly picking one. Oh, I'd like to do that one this month. And I didn't. I just started at the top and I worked through. And what I also did then is I kind of dived into my yarn bag and chose two colours, for example, or three colours. And sometimes it's worked out really well. Like, I think this is one of my favourites that I've grabbed. I love these little elves, sort of wee willy winky style. Um, so I really like the cream and the grey. That worked out well. Whereas I've kind of picked this one out to show off as well. Um, and you can't really tell what this is. So this is really, really low contrast with the blue and the grey. And I was halfway through it and I contemplated stopping, ripping it back and do it again. Um, but I kind of thought, no, 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 embrace the randomness, which is what I've done. Um, the thing with this one is you can't really tell what the pattern's meant to be anyway. It is this very sort of moving, fluid, grey pattern. Um, so I'm not sure you're meant to see, whereas this one, for example, is very sort of Scandinavian, you can tell it's it's a sort of a more traditional pattern, whereas this one is a bit more random, but I think it's shown off even less because of the low contrast that I chose. But again, is it my least favourite of them? You know, they're not like children or nieces, you know, will never pick a favourite. And I kind of feel like it probably is my least favourite of them, but it's part of a collection. Um, it matches. It just isn't <laughs> the Wee Willy Winkies. Um, so yeah, so I think in terms of how I, I chose them, that's kind of very much random. The other thing I wanted to talk about was tension. And again, I've talked in previous videos, if you've watched for a while, I don't tend to swatch because I'm neither too loose nor too tight. I kind of just, I seem to do okay and I just get by. But there have been a couple of times um, in the last few months where tension has got me and I've had to restart a section or I've had to do something again. But what I thought was interesting with these is I haven't done a tension swatch. Um, but often you hear about tension can very much depend on the needles and the yarn and how they work together. But actually how we are as crafters and the perfect way of showing this off is look at the difference in these two baubles. Now, they all start with the same number of stitches and they all finish with the same number of stitches and they all have the same recurring pattern. But this one is considerably bigger than this one and I haven't overstuffed this. This has got a real nice squish and the similar squish to this one, but it's just a lot bigger. Now, that's obviously a tension issue, although if I'm honest and I'm looking at the stitches close up with my own eye, they kind of look the same. The stitches don't look considerably different, so I don't know. But it must be, because this had three colours on the go, albeit only ever two at a time, and this one only had two, I, I, I don't really know. I think maybe I was feeling particularly tight or stressed when I made this one or particularly happy or I don't know. This one was done maybe in the first third. This wasn't the first bauble that I did. It was probably five or six, for example, whereas this one was done closer to the end. But again, I might have just been particularly stressed one day. I might have not been in the mood to do a bauble and I didn't really enjoy doing it. I might not have paid much attention to my stitches and this one's a bit looser, which makes the stitches slightly larger. But I thought that was really interesting that actually same knitter, same wool, same needles, but a very different result. And you can't tell massively in the picture, um, but I, I can kind of tell that this one is a bit bigger. Um, and the Wee Willy Winky one is much closer in size to this one. But I thought that was quite interesting to, to share as well. So it, it's it's definitely been a labour of love. I, I have mostly enjoyed it. I haven't enjoyed being behind, but as I said, it's knitting. It's very much my own deadline that I imposed. And if I didn't get them all done by this year, hey, so what? But I'm super pleased. Thumbnail.
I'm super pleased that I got all my baubles done. Mark loves them, which is the most important thing. And I know he loves them. And you know, you know when your partner or a friend or a family member says, oh, that's nice. And you know that they mean it's nice. But actually, there's a little bit of you that's like, mm, do you really like them? Um, I know that Mark loves these because as soon as they were finished, they were all sitting on the dining table. And I finished work one day and he'd taken all of the baubles. He put them on the tree in the hallway. He'd taken pictures and put them on his Instagram. Look what Martin's made. And there was a little element of pride there because it's like, oh, he really does like what I've made. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of quite cute and quite sweet. But Mark loves them. And Mark wanted me to make the baubles, which is all that matters. So I'm super happy that they're now finished. Um, I don't mind that they're a little bit different sized because do you know what? I made them and in years to come, we'll be taking them out of the Christmas box when we decorate the tree each year. And they'll be like, oh, do you remember that year that Martin made baubles? So yeah, that is me and my Arn and Carlos baubles from the bauble along. Um, and just to wrap this video up by kind of saying, you know, absolutely give yourselves a challenge, set yourself, I would recommend the pattern, very well laid out. And once you've made one bauble, the concept of how many stitches you start with, how the increases work, how the decreases work and how you finish, it's the same on every bauble. The only difference is the little pattern that you follow. It is charted, it's not written out. So you do follow the chart. Um, and I do a two-handed technique. I do feel like my Fair Isle two-handed has got a lot better um, throughout the year as well because I've been able to work on that. And I'm not being funny. Folks, if we can do two-handed Fair Isle using double-pointed needles, so we're trying to hold the needles and stop our stitches falling off, which is why I know lots of you don't really like DPNs because we worry that we lose stitches off the end. And we can do two-colour. That is a big tick in the uh, the knitter's box. So I would definitely recommend it if you want to jump in and do that. Um, and then just to finish, I did say, <laughs> I said to Mark, don't ever let me say I want to do another 12 month project. I don't, I'm done. It's too much pressure or in my lowest point when I was probably like eight behind, but I've decided. <laughs> um, so, next year's challenge which will feature in my i'll do a planning video for kind of what i want to achieve in 2022 um but <laughs> stay tuned for more 12 month fun so um i bought this book earlier in the year with the intention of making a festive bird and i didn't get around to making a festive bird this year so if i didn't do one bird this year hey let's make 12 next year so this is by the lovely Carrie Lord of Toft. You all know my love of Toft. We won't need to talk about that in this video. But this is a partridge in a pear tree, crochet the 12 birds of Christmas. So here is the partridge. And there we've got all the other birds. So my plan <laughs> is to do one bird a month. I'm not a big fan of the birds, um, only because I think they're fiddly, like the legs, that tiny little crochet. But this year's Advent Crochet Along has helped me with the birds because um, I've actually quite enjoyed it. And I feel like I've grown in confidence since I did my last bird. Um, but each but each bird as usual. So this is day 11. Uh, this is Nina the spoon Spoonbilled Sandpiper. 11 Pipers Piping. So they're all on a theme. And I am super excited to be doing this. And again, this is this is properly gonna be no stress. I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I might select them rather than doing one, one a month um, and doing them in a random order. Like I'm not particularly first on Lois the Great Cormorant because she's in black. And black's not really my colour. So I might not do Lois to start with. If I'm going to be behind, I'd rather be behind and just make the ones that I like. But hey, you know me. I love a challenge. <laughs> so um, first up is going to be Felix the Partridge. 
Um, and I've already bought the wool for Felix. So I bought that in the Ed's extravaganza. So I hope that you'll join me for more <laughs> 12 month projects. Um, let me know in the comments below what 12 month projects have you got on? So what did you do this year? Did you do one? Have you got any plans to do one next year? Have I inspired you? Have I made you think that man is crazy? I'm not doing a 12 month project. Let me know below. Um, it'll be lovely to see what you're all planning to work on. Um, but I'm going to wrap this video up now. I said it was very much a mini podette, um, just to share specifically about the baubles, not a full on podcast. But I hope that you enjoyed seeing some of the close ups in the beginning. I hope you've enjoyed a bit of my natter um, and my thoughts on that project and the pattern. Um, if you've liked what you've seen, please give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. If you don't subscribe already, lovely to have you here as part of the community. And if you subscribe, you get notifications when my new videos are up and live. Um, if you were returning, thank you as always. As I always say, I really, really do appreciate you being here and giving me a little bit of your time. And if you were a new viewer who's just stumbled upon me for the baubles, hi, hello, go and check out some of my advent uh, vlogmas videos from the last couple of weeks where I've been talking more about the baubles and how I've sewn them up and how they've been created. But I hope that you are all keeping well. This video is gonna go live before my final Vlogmas video. So it depends if you're watching them in order. Um, there's one more video to come in the next couple of days, uh, which will be the wrap up for the Advent Crochet Along Bird. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, so until we speak again, thank you for being here and happy crafting.